Alright guys, welcome back to Valorant News. More roster updates over the last 24 hours, especially on what might be happening on the Sentinel situation right now. It's been crazy over there over the last couple of days. Tens into the retirement home, Sassy into the retirement home. Which players are they targeting to replace them? Well, there's a couple of names that have come to mind over the last few days, but they're not going to have it all their own way. Recent rumours emerging that Jorgamo, whose Sentinels have apparently been trialling, has also been trialling with Leviathan. Could they target him instead with their seemingly major rebuild as well for the upcoming season? Could Sentinels potentially come on some other drama elsewhere. Very much intrigued to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Shout out Mixwell by the way. Departing the Heretics organization. Of course he's been there for a rather long time. Player, content creator etc etc. We'll see where he goes next if anywhere. Of course he was on the Optic CS team back in the day. That had some good success. I know they love him over at that organization. But um, yeah, wishing the best of course for Mixwell. This is a big deal though last night. I guess we should start with this tweet really from the Ascends. So let's not forget the organization that won champions in 2021 from EMEA. They didn't get a spot in the franchise league and over the last couple of years they've been struggling to ascend right to get quite through and it's not quite happened and they've decided as a result that it's simply not worth continuing their story in Valorant any longer which um you know it is a sad day for sure to see an organization that was such an important part of Valorant history effectively decide you know what it's no longer worth it for us as an organization to stay around here in Valorant so um yeah sad to see they talk about the increasingly hostile style ecosystem has simply made it untenable to responsibly run a team like responsibly from a financial perspective and that makes an awful lot of sense and we're seeing this from other people as well for example um you know the founder of z10 an organization over in the balkans i think mainly he says i'm thinking of doing the same for all riot ecosystem games it's unbearable to be here as if they don't want us so this is the question right because the way that riot operate the tier 2 scene the goal is all about the players on some level to help them promote it doesn't really benefit the organizations at all to even represent players it's actually more beneficial for the organization just to not even bother representing a team and when that team then qualifies or does quite well then maybe sign them right that's just kind of how the structure seems to be down there and there's not really that many incentives for the teams to really give it their all down there just because if they, you know, maybe they can qualify for the Ascension, maybe they can't, but regardless, there's just so much money that they potentially throw down on the drain, and even then you're not guaranteed to stay in the league too long anyway, even if you get in. So, um, it's a difficult world, and we're seeing this a lot lately, and I just think it's a general talking point in Valorant right now, and in Riot Ecosystem Games, as he describes in general, that we have players at, you know, young ages, maybe retiring earlier than they could or should. We've got organizations leaving the scene earlier than they could or should. You know, I think there's got to be a conversation had about why that is and, um, you know, whether the ecosystem can improve to make it better for everyone as a result. Apex, however, they are on the good side. They did make it, right? They qualified for Apex and um, Valorant. They won Ascension in EMEA and they get there as the 2025 winners. China, of course, is ongoing. Tomorrow is when we're going to see the first round of games in their playoffs. Rare Atom, of course, are going to be coming in potentially as the favourites over there. They look pretty strong last year potentially that's going to be the case this year as well and also tomorrow is when we get the Americas underway four teams remain down to just one in a couple of days time when the champion is going to be crowned let's talk though about the Sentinel situation because it's been manus over the last few days of course with well Tens and Shazam and Zoms and Sick now retiring and you know Dapper potentially still looking for a team and even Dapper responds to this and says damn so um yeah it's been tough as it is wishing them all the best of course and as Sentinel say don't cry because it's over smile because it happened with these two boys that are now no longer part of their roster but it's a big rebuild to have I mean we can see Psycho in the back when they can't wait. well that was um, a cursed time of that Sentinels organization but what next for the Sentinels team in terms of replacing these guys on the roster because it's not an easy thing to replace these guys in any respect and we'll see what they might be doing here in a second 100T were teasing something as well now knowing 100 Thieves I think everyone saw this and realized okay they're probably just joking around they've got all their trophies in the background they've got a nice new chair that they were going to sit down and then they say okay there's actually nothing to talk about here Sintel's, um <laughs> kind of take the mic out of them and say look we did it original and the best shall we say and then he says or 100 thieves say no announcement or anything we just wanted to show off the chair pretty nice chair to be fair but um will 100t do anything at this roster period because it kind of feels like they should but um it doesn't seem especially likely 
that they will. I think that's the key talking point really in the moment in 100 Thieves is that, you know, I think there's an argument that their team should try and improve because they just weren't really good enough, especially towards the end of this season. I'm not sure if you just keep that roster together, they're necessarily going to get that much better to where they need and want to be. But um, maybe they can. And also it's difficult to know what exactly you do if you are going to try and change that team. And Asana's reaction on stream over the last few days has been relatively mixed, but the general feeling seems to be that he's probably not going to be going anywhere. You're not, you know, realistically, you'd think you're not going to get rid of Cryo unless somebody like NRG pays a mega buyout for him, which is maybe possible. There were rumours about that a while ago, but that seemed to be coming from fake sources. And, um, you know, EU, maybe... Maybe you could try and upgrade, but he's got better and better boost. Yo, you're not going to get rid of unless there's ma massive drama with the whole content stuff. But seemingly they've resolved that. And then Bang has been great as well. So it's just an interesting team, isn't it, 100 Thieves? The key point, though, that's worthy of note is that we have not that far from now on the 29th of September in Seattle, Washington a Red Bull Home Guns tournament, the NA qualifier, and there are some notable teams playing in this tournament. The um, the Cloud9 team, the MXS team, and the Sentinels team, they're all playing in this in 13 or so days. So they have to have a roster by that point. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they can't change that roster again, but um, Sentinels especially, but also Cloud9 and the others, they have to at least choose a roster that they are going to play this tournament and this qualifier with. So they only have a few days, really, Sentinels to determine, okay, based on what we have trialed and done so far, this is the team we are going to advance with. And, you know, as a result of that, they may lose out on some time to actually come to a better decision if potentially there were some other players available that they weren't aware of. And, you know, they may be forced into a move because by the time the qualifier is over, maybe another team has signed a player that they were also considering. So, I think Sentinels have to make a call relatively quickly. If they do go to Seattle and they do awful, then obviously they can still make a change again. There's nothing necessarily stopping that. But um, they will, you know, have to announce some sort of roster for this tournament because, you know, they can't play a tournament without having a roster for it. So that's when the question is, well, are they just going to pull the trigger on the players that they have currently been trialing over the last few days? This is Rocket Bullet's latest spreadsheet, who, um, well, it doesn't seem like things have been too unreliable over the last few days, but I guess time will tell. This is what's happening in the Americas. Couple of new players to note. There's been questions on how likely Salak actually is to go to crew. Of course, NRG, we saw that Verno and Scuba now linked over there potentially as well. Cloud9 with Vic and Rossi still and potentially Mitch as well. So, um, you know, we'll see what Cloud9 get up to. But again, another one of those teams that's got to confirm things relatively quickly. This, though, is a pretty interesting development over on Lev. So, we've got Aspas likelihoods being reduced Reduced. Not precisely clear as it stands where he might potentially go, but um, you know, the latest rumor is that Aspas's chances to stay on the team are potentially reducing. So that makes things kind of interesting if you're a team like Sentinels, doesn't it? To at least think about what the likelihood of that could be and whether that could even work. So um, yeah, that's what's happening with Lev. But Mazzino potentially is going to come back into the roster after getting, you know, there's been some drama the other day, restricted free agent, all this stuff. Maybe he's going to come back. Marda has been linked as well as has Jorgamo. So, um, you know, and Sassy was obviously linked as well, but that ain't happening anymore because he's now retired. And of course, he's there for off Sentinels too. But yesterday we saw that Jorgamo was kind of being linked to Sentinels as a potential candidate. We know that Narrate has been trialing with them. We don't know how these trials have gone, but um, any trial involving John QT, Zeltis, and Zekin is going to be pretty good. Jorgamo, however, how is that going to work with Zekin? If you brought Aspas in, potentially, just in some hypothetical world where you can somehow make that happen, then um, you know, how's that going to work with Zekin? Those are other questions too. But um, I think for Jorgamo, if Sintels want to do that deal and get him into their roster, which they may well do, as I said yesterday, Jorgamo, a player that's very highly rated by other pro players, although that may not necessarily always be the case from the community he's also being linked to Lev now. So, and if he's trialing with Lev, if he's trialing with Sen, then, you know, someone's got to make a decision at some point of what they're going to do and may have to pull the trigger, especially because Sentinels only have a few days, really, to figure out what their plans actually are. A couple of interesting points here, right? Apex added as well to the spreadsheet. Pretty cool after their championship victory. But um, we have a couple of interesting notes. For example, on Movistar, when Sarak and Flyer have been linked to this team as a potential rumour. So, 
you know, it's interesting to think about. I don't know if, like, how likely Salak actually would be to go there. But, um, you know, because we think crew might be the more likely one. But, you know, if the money is right, if the bag is right, maybe there's something to be said for that. Carmine Cobb of all sorts of stuff going on. Patty Tech's being linked over there, among others, with trials happening. Team Liquid, Soul Cast, potential reduced likelihood over there. But that's pretty much where things stand today. So it's going to be a difficult rebuild for Sentinels, losing players of that caliber. Is, you know, the likes of Narrate and Jorgamo, are they the right players to target? Or do they need to go, like, all out and try and say, all right, we're losing 10s, we're going to get Aspas, right? And speak to him from Lev and see if there's a deal to be done and say, look, Lev, you know, you guys can have Jorgamo, we're taking Aspas this way. But um, I don't know what you guys thought, oh, that in the comments below, but hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are new, take care, and I'll see you next time.